In the last episode of our server adventure, we talked a whole lot about the Silverstone RS 43320, the 4U server case that can hold up to 20 individual hard drives. But for today, we have a lot more components that are crucial to make this build perform like I expected to. And the main focus about today's video is going to be that Asus motherboard, where the name isn't even written on the box. It's so much server, the box doesn't say what it is. That, that's how server it Gets. This is the Asus, and I have a note here because I cannot remember the name. It's the Core KRPA16. This is a raw server motherboard. There is nothing. Oh my god. This bag contained this sticker. Talk about compensation. Anyway, this is a raw server motherboard. There is nothing consumer friendly, consumer grade about this, especially not the form factor or the shape that it has. But we will see everything about it in a second. Oh yeah, this is the Asus KRP KRPA16. And now you can see that hole that I was referring to in the first video, which is like seemingly random, but it does have a, a very important purpose. But let's talk about this beautiful little motherboard. So what we got here is a gigantic AMD SP3 socket. These epic CPUs are, it's, it's the first time that I'm building one and I'm so freaking excited. In here you can mount either a 7002 or 7003 epic series CPUs and our 7763 is a 7003 series, yeah. And by spec it should fit no problem there. And for that gigantic socket what we also got are 16 DDR3 up to 3200 megahertz ECC memory slots. Now that is a lot of freaking slots and you can mount up to 2048 gigabytes of RAM. Now that is a lot of freaking RAM. I, I won't use all of it. It's, it's no way that's not financially doable for me. That's so much RAM. And to fill all of these little slots, what I already got ourselves are a lot of these bags. Oh, this is uh, packaged up in a great way. So what I got myself here are 64 gigs of Samsung 3200 ECC memory. Now, I could have gone with whatever the hell I wanted. Of course I could. However, because we are in a server space, in a server motherboard space, server CPU space, what I really wanted to do is keep everything up to spec what is, or what is noted on the supported list. So the CPU is supported by the motherboard and confirmed. This memory is supported by the motherboard and confirmed and verified. And that's really freaking important. Now I, I guess I could use whatever 3200 megahertz RAM, maybe even quicker, maybe slower. I want to be sure. The whole thing should be running 24-7 for months and months and months on repeat. I, I don't want to play with it. It just needs to function. That's why I will absolutely stick to the spec. Now. These bags, I got a whole bunch of them, so let's just unpack everything here for a second. Ah, so what I got myself here is one gigantic sandwich of eight sticks running that 64 gigs at 3200. Now what I found out in the motherboard manual is that you want to run at least eight sticks. You can run all 16 and that would, or this totals me at 512 gigabytes of RAM and I could have gone with 1024 gigs, of course I could, but how the hell will I fill up 512 gigabytes of RAM running TrueNAS? I have no clue and I just wanted to keep it to spec, so at least 8 sticks and I didn't want to go with like 16 or 8 gigs per stick, so here we are, 8 sticks. I always have the possibility to double it if I somehow decide that that isn't enough, but it's 512 gigs. This is so much fucking RAM. Let's go back to the motherboard because there is so freaking much to cover about this beast. Like for example the situation with the PCIe slots. In the very bottom we got one Gen 3 by 16 slot. The one above is also a Gen 3 by 16 slot. However,
server, it will jump into ADEX mode as soon as the slot above it is being used. And this one already based on its form is a regular Gen 3 ADEX slot. Then the one above is also an ADEX slot, but this one is running in Gen 4 mode. And the one at the very top, that, that's the most interesting one. And I have never seen anything like that. This is some sort of X24 slot. And as much as I could learn from the manual, this is a Gen 4 X24 slot, but it behaves somehow like a Gen 4 16x slot with an 8x link. Now I have no clue what type of device uses a x24 slot. I have never seen that. I, I have to google and, and research a bit because I have no freaking clue. But at, at the same time this, this does look kind of interesting. It's a hell of a long slot. To be honest I have never seen that. I have no clue what a x24 slot is. I just know the x16 ones but x64 or even x16 with an 8x link whatever that that means what device uses that I have never seen that but I suppose there are some sort of expansion cards that use it otherwise it wouldn't exist so there is something about it but it's it's looking hella cool and my question just is at what point will this be coming to the mainstream consumer market how it always is stuff used on motherboards at some point will just flow down to consumer but hey with GPUs having a PCIe slot that long maybe the sack will be less of a problem who knows then what's also interesting here here is this slot. This is called a mezzanine slot and it behaves like a Gen 4 X16 slot. And it's really freaking interesting and it is it was so frustrating for me at the same time. So Asus uses these a lot on their motherboards and what they intended them to be used for is as an expansion slot for, for ReRio mostly network cards. And they had one, they had a Fiber SPIF network card that was slotting right in here and then giving you the ports to, to the back using the same space as like the regular ReRio of a motherboard. And I, I, I tried to buy that card and I kind of got it, but then a month later I got a mail that yeah it's end of life, we are not producing it anymore, you can't get it. Which really sucked for me and, and I needed to go a different route, but that's what the port was intended to. And if you want to stay in like Ace spec for the motherboard, use it, I just couldn't. Uh, it, it, yeah, the card is gone and there is no being produced anymore. So maybe somewhere on eBay will find it, but not using my distributors. So very unfortunate. And for me, this space here, this empty space, which would be filled by a card, is going to stay empty. I can't really change anything about that. Now, as much as this frustrated me, I still wanted to go the fiber route instead of regular like R45 connector with copper in it. So what I got myself here, wrong box. So what, what I, I remember this, I unpacked this this morning. What I got myself here is one giant box for one very very small card. It's it's incredible how much box per card there is and, and all of this is just for an additional PCIe bracket. What a waste of carton. What I got for us for this project here is a regular PCIe card with um, SPIF, I believe it is pronounced, with the fiber connection for network. So this is a 10 gig card with two ports. I will just use one because my switch, my 10 gig switch only has a single port, so I will stay on that. But this is a regular PCIe card which will replace the mezzanine, or however Asus wanted to call it, uh, card that was supposed to go here. So this slots into a very regular 8x slot, or I could also s slide it into the X24 slot. It does look kind of cool, but this will do the net networking for us. It's just so unfortunate I wanted to fill the space and have like a regular motherboard but I, I can't change that now. But on that note we also got a whole bunch of storage like here in the bottom we got one M.2 slot for NVMe and the other one I believe is here. One is here and the other one is I know that there are two. Am I too stupid to fight an NVMe? There are supposed to be two NVMe spots on here or two M.2 slots either NVMe or SATA, but okay, I, I can't find it. Somewhere here there is supposed to be a second PCIe, uh, a second uh, M.2 NVMe or SATA port, but I can only find one. I, I have no clue. It was supposed to be somewhere around here. Okay, I, I'll have to check that later, but we got at least one NVMe spot. Except that one found and one missing NVMe spot, we still got a lot more storage going on because in the end it is still a server motherboard. It needs a lot of storage. And in the bottom what we got here are four individual SATA ports. 
From there, we got a lot more, 16 more to be exact, because if you look here, this is the mini SAS connector I was talking about in the uh, Silverstone RS320, no, RS43320 video. This is that one special connector that can be adapted to four individual SATA ports, and in total, we got one, two, and up here we got a third one. Now if you pay close attention in the RS video, we need a total of five. And this motherboard has only three and I was restrained by the choice of the, of the CPU and I couldn't get a motherboard that has all five. But what I could get, or what I've gotten myself, is this little adapter here. This is the PCIe X4 adapter that gives me one of these mini SAS connectors. And what I can do using this little connector is just slide it into whatever slot I want and then it gives me another mini SAS connector. And from there, now I'm at, at 4, I can get another PCIe adapter and then I'm at 5, meaning I have enough to use all the different individual blades inside the uh, backplane of the case or of the server chassis. So this is my attempt of getting more connectors so that I can use this motherboard in combination with the case that we got. And apparently, based on multiple forum entries, there isn't any issue if you use these types of connectors. They seem to be pretty reliable, and I sincerely hope that none of them dies, but apparently they function great. What I could also do is use one of these four SATA connectors to one mini SAS connector, and then just adapt it like that. I could do it, but I would need to fill all four SATA ports to use one more blade and I didn't want to do that because I was planning to use a regular uh, SATA SSD to boot FreeNAS later on. So I need at least one of these ports and I didn't want to adapt these four to go somewhere to then use another adapter in the PCIe slot to give me more SATA to then use, it was, that would be a mess. So I'm going to use these types of adapters to get the two missing mini SAS connectors. I'm still kind of amazed how this is looking. It's kind of cool. For storage, this is about it. So let's get to the cute IO. In the back of the motherboard, what we got ourselves is the cutest IO ever. This is dual one gig network, one management port, probably to control server stuff, two USB 3.0s, a VGA port, and a start button. Isn't this cute? And speaking about the VGA port, this motherboard has a built-in GPU. It's a S-Speed AST2500, rocking a total of 64 megabytes of VRAM. It's a display adapter. Its only purpose is to display a 1080 image of whatever TrueNAS is doing. So I don't need a lot of power for this. This is, will function just fine. I won't connect a GPU for a uh, storage server. That wouldn't make a lot of sense in my case. From there, it's a pretty regular server motherboard. We got an army of PWM connections. We got an internal USB 3.0 header. We got, what else do we got? We got a little, little readout for uh, error messages and the usual stuff that you would expect. But what is unusual is this here, a micro SD slot. Now I heard about it, I have never seen it in person, but I've heard that there are server implementations that just boot off a, a little micro SD card, which makes total sense for me, because the, the usual server OS is ridiculously small, and why the hell would you want to fill up a, a full SSD or use the space of a full, let's say, SATA SSD or even a hard drive just to boot a 250 megabytes copy of TrueNAS or whatever it takes, but it's not even a gigabyte, so this makes perfect sense. I don't know if I want to do it. I, I kind of don't trust SD cards. I don't know why. So I, I'm not sure if I'm going to attempt using attempt installing anything using the SD card, but uh, apparently there's a possibility. So. Uh, for those who want to do that, sure, why not? But now let's talk about the potential issue that we are going to have with this motherboard. The CPU that we are going to use is a AMD Epic 7763. Now it is officially supported by this motherboard. However, only after BIOS revision 0105. The problem is I have no clue what is installed on this motherboard. It is very much possible that this is was sitting in a warehouse somewhere and it has a very old BIOS version. Now this means that I somehow 
somehow need to update the BIOS without installing the CPU, which I'm not sure how I will do. I sincerely doubt that there is some sort of mechanism to uh, to update the BIOS on this motherboard without a CPU, like modern consumer-grade motherboards do really have that option. But on server-grade stuff, I sincerely doubt that that is even a possibility. But I guess I, I can't find out. I will need to install the, the CPU and I will need to find out for myself. So this can go very, very wrong, but uh, we will see about that. In the worst case scenario, I will try to find the lowest tier, lowest, uh, the, the least expensive AMD Epic CPU that is on the supported list for this motherboard by default, and then use that to update it. Uh, but I sincerely hope that I don't have to do that because getting like Epic CPUs can be quite expensive here. Or oh, the price, I forgot about the price. So I paid for this myself, it was 422 euros which it is a lot for a motherboard, but I, I am not like shocked about it. It's a server motherboard. So uh, I was expecting even more. 422 euros, sure. And as long as it does the job and does it reliably, I'm happy with that. Now, one feature I haven't talked about and I really won't because I can't check it is, I got a little brochure, is that Asus Control Center, which apparently is a sort of remote software to control the server, see the CPU load, see the CPU temperature, see how the chassis is doing. You probably have a bunch of readouts and a bunch of things that you can uh, control using that software. Now I will try it out and, and see how it does things. If it's a background thing or if you need to run in the foreground it's in some way. I will find out more about the software but we need to wait with that until the PC or the server is up and running and that I can install any type of software on it. Assuming that the CPU will even boot. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. But for today, this is going to be it. We talked a, b a lot about the motherboard and for the next time we'll get the CPU, install the CPU, talk a bit about it because we got so much CPU power for that little, uh, how should I say, that little performance that you actually need to run 20 hard drives. <laughs> it's not much and the CPU will idle the majority of the time, but we will see about that. For today, this is about it. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next when we talk about the CPU and some real performance that we're going to smash into this and I believe in the next episode we already start to install a bunch of components. CPU can already go in, the cooler, I can put the motherboard into the case, the RAM, the brackets, the, the PCIe adapters and all of that. So uh, the server will be built in the next episode. So hope to see you in the next one and bye bye.